It has become quite the buzzword, looks maxing, the art of maximizing your looks. Just how much could really be involved? Well, it turns out a lot. So I spent 30 days doing every DIY looks max technique I could find. This is what happened, but you gotta focus. I started this quest off with a cornerstone to this concept, maximizing jaw, cheekbone, and maxillary structure. Now you see a lot of us, myself included, since a young age, have been mouth breathers. While this seems innocent, chronically this can lead to a slacking long face with a weak jaw structure. Now if you watch my videos, you will know that over the past two years I have been deliberately trying to be more of a nose breather, and I feel like I have been succeeding. However, even though I'm still breathing through my nose, if you pull away my lips, you will see that in my mouth, my jaw is still slacking and my tongue is just hanging out wherever it wants. I mean, regarding jaw strength, this is almost as bad as just leaving my mouth hanging wide open. So in order to hopefully fix this and strengthen my jaw and overall face structure, I started with the simple technique of mewing. That is deliberately placing the tongue on the roof of the mouth, bringing the teeth to a soft close or almost close, sealing the lips and then breathing through the nose. Now something I found that I feel like a lot of people don't cover is you want to almost feel this creation of a negative pressure in the mouth, sealing the tongue to the roof. When figuring out how to do this, it felt like I was actually activating more jaw, cheekbone, and maxillary structure than simply just making these placements around in my mouth. Now I have tried mewing in the past, but only in spurts. This time I would try to mew every time I wasn't eating or talking. Hopefully by the end of this experiment, I will be seeing drastic results. Speaking of food, the next technique to target the jaw muscles that I would implement, eating more chewy food and chewing that chewy food more. For instance, choosing something like a steak or a whole chicken breast over some form of ground meat. And then regardless, chewing that food at least 30 times before swallowing, therefore activating and working more jaw muscles, hopefully training the jaw to become stronger and look sharper over these 30 days. And then, in addition to this, after every meal, chewing a hard, sugar-free xylitol gum to additionally work the jaw muscles and also also potentially clean the teeth. For now, I felt like I had the jaw fundamentals covered, but later on in the experiment, I would eventually get into more intensive jaw training. Stay tuned. The next thing I would immediately try to address is my posture. As much as I emphasize having good posture, working long hours at the computer, I often slouch and slowly start to take on that forward head look also known as tech neck. So in order to combat this, bringing my desk higher so that my screen is more in line with my eyesight. In addition, working on these posture correcting exercises and stretches for just a five minute session, but daily throughout this experiment. Speaking of exercises, the next thing I did was addressing overall physical shape. After researching an array of studies and opinions on the most attractive male physique, I drew the conclusion that favorable physical shape for male looks maxing consists of having masculine muscular features, but not being too big, and then also being lean, but not too lean. This range seems to go anywhere from that classic Brad Pitt from Fight Club look to a thicker, more muscular Chris Hemsworth look. Now one thing I've noticed from both of these sides of the spectrum is that these men tend to have emphasized some of the male masculine physical features such as broader or muscular shoulders and having a decently sized neck. So in order to focus on this leaner yet masculine physical shape, I first turned my training to more calisthenics. Also choosing exercises to target these masculine areas such as pike push-ups, handstand push-ups, etc. Speaking of which, if you're looking for a bodyweight training program, check out my 12-week calisthenics program Bodyweight Beast 2.0, onlykindsfitness.com. Use code FOCUS at the checkout. Now, in addition to calisthenics, I later on threw some functional training in to help work on posture and overall stature, and I also had the occasional weight training session for some spice. But most importantly, in addition to this, I increased my NEAT or overall calorie expenditure by going on more walks. All of this combined with a slight calorie deficit, I was hoping to maintain or maybe even gain some muscle in some areas while becoming slightly leaner over this month to hopefully achieve the right physical look. Covering the fundamentals of the face and body, what about overall skin complexion? Well, I started with the basics from the inside out. 
I stopped eating any food that I ever found was correlated with having oily and irritated skin. For me, that meant cutting out highly processed sugar or flour foods like candies, cookies, etc., and then also cutting out foods with processed oil in them, like chips. I love chips. Dang. Now on top of this, I tried to achieve a healthy overall glow. Using my red light device five minutes a day on the front side of my body, including my face, because it has been shown in various studies that red light may improve skin complexion, appearance, and health. My device is by Mito Red Light. I absolutely love this product and I will leave my affiliate link to their website in the description. In addition to this red light, I was also looking for a little bit of natural UV light from the sun to hopefully achieve that healthy look looking tan. However, going into fall, there wasn't much and I was afraid my tan would suffer. But then, very interesting, I came across this study. Apparently, according to this study, carotenoid skin coloration is found more attractive than melanin coloration. What this is saying is that glow one might get from eating carotenoid heavy foods like carrots, sweet potatoes, etc. apparently is a more favorable look over the tanned look from like the sun or a tanning bed. I don't know how much I personally believe this. What do you guys think? Anyways, with there being less sun outside, I tried to maximize my carotenoid look by eating more carrots, sweet potatoes, the occasional beetroot powder intro workout, high in carotenoids, but also helps with endurance and blood flow. This by Snap Supplements is my favorite beetroot powder, organic. Now, in addition to these foods and supplements, there was another supplement that I have been taking since 2014, but decided to up the dose on. Astaxanthin. Astaxanthin, a powerful antioxidant and carotenoid. It's actually one of the first longevity supplements I got into. Now, specifically for this experiment, every time I take this, I literally notice my skin complexion looks like it becomes more colorful within a couple of hours, and that lasts pretty much throughout the day. I've been taking anywhere between four milligrams and 12 milligrams on the daily, but for this experiment, I'm gonna up that dose to 24 milligrams. One 12 milligram dose in the morning, and then one 12 milligram dose at night. So upping my astaxanthin dose to 12 milligrams twice a day, primarily for the skin complexion and coloration benefits. Now just a precaution, taking too much astaxanthin may lead to stomach pain and a red color stool, but personally, I did not experience this at all. Next, I dove into the vastness of topical skin treatments to potentially revitalize, rejuvenate, and increase attraction on the facial skin. Honestly, I was overwhelmed with the number of products and all these treatments that you could possibly put on your face skin, so I had to try to simplify it based on my personal goals. Being someone, thankfully, who hasn't suffered with acne in quite a while, I felt like I didn't necessarily need a powerful cleanser, so I wanted to focus on the skin looking youthful, tight, and healthy. Starting with a facial toner to hopefully tighten the skin, I guess, and then stacking this with a moisture moisturizer to lock in that hydration and keep the skin youthful looking as well as every other day applying this homemade cocoa mask to my under eyes to hopefully alleviate that under eye bagginess. So I just got this recipe from a website. It was just two tablespoons of cacao powder, one teaspoon of raw honey, a teaspoon of bentonite clay, a teaspoon of coconut oil, and the recipe said one teaspoon of filtered water, but I had to use four teaspoons of filtered water to get it to mix. Mix it all together, apply this to those bags for 10 to 15 minutes, and bada bing, bada boom. Now I ended up trying a simple cleanse and tone face mask with the classic cucumber slice eye covers, which actually did feel pretty fresh. However, due to the cost and inconvenience of trying to do this every day compared to the cacao mask, which I felt was just as effective, I stuck with the homemade cacao mask on a consistent basis. And crazy enough, early on in this experiment, it seemed like this ridiculous skincare routine was actually making a difference. Enough about skin, what about hair? So I feel like I already have a routine that has pretty much allowed me to maintain decent hair health over the past couple of years. It really only consists of using a biotin infused shampoo, using a basic shower filter to help filter out some of the chlorine to prevent over dryness, and then, as weird as it's going to sound, rubbing MSM lotion into my hair before I go to bed. Now in addition to this, over the past two years I have been using red light therapy which has been shown in various studies to help improve hair health and hair regrowth. So throughout this Looks Max challenge I continued doing all 
of these things regularly. In addition now, there is an essential oil of rosemary that has been said to work comparably as minoxidil, which is a topical solution, usually in the brand name of Rogaine, that has been clinically shown to help regrow or stop and reverse male pattern baldness. Although I don't feel like I was suffering from male pattern baldness, for this experiment, I took some rosemary oil, I mixed it with my MSM lotion, and I applied it daily after the shower to some of the weaker areas in my hairline. I always love finding natural alternatives. Usually they have less side effects, and in this case, that is true as well. In the study where they compared rosemary and minoxidil, the minoxidil group had scalp itch at the points of application where the rosemary group was pretty much side effect free, aside from smelling like a turkey. So far, I felt off to a good start working on things to maximize the jawline, the physical body, overall skin complexion, and hair. But what about the overall vibe? No, really. Often overlooked, I feel like there's this overall way one holds themselves that should be maximized as well. I am talking about minimizing an anxious, nervous, stressed outlook and replacing it with a confident, calm, cool look. Now, rather than just trying to fake this look, I think it looks more natural to address the problem and make the look appear from within. So that is, if you are occasionally an anxious and stressed out person, like I sometimes get, work on techniques to reduce anxiety and stress before they become chronic. Now, in many of my previous videos and challenges, I have attempted to do just that. Taking some of those techniques to this challenge that I felt like worked wonders for anxiety and stress, such as meditation, not looking at the phone right before going to bed, having a consistent sleep schedule, reducing caffeine intake, and taking the occasional deep breath before and after stressful work and life situations. Now, in addition to all of these techniques, I also began implementing vagal nerve stimulation. The vagus nerve, which is the main nerve in control of your parasympathetic nervous system that is controlling that rest and digestion Digest, apparently can get out of whack, thus leading to an imbalance in stress and anxiety. Well, I explored techniques using devices built to stimulate this nerve in order to lead to an overall more balanced nervous system. I have an entire video on this concept coming up. Anyways, I felt this vagal nerve stimulation along with all of these other techniques allowed me to achieve a calmer, cooler, collected feeling and thus look. Yo. Doing all of these looks max techniques consistently on a daily basis is actually ending up to be quite a lot. It's like almost like a full-time job. And guess what? There's still more. Keeping up with everything consistently on a daily basis was ending up being quite a lot of work. But already past the halfway point and seeing good results, I was determined to push through till the end. With that being said, for the final several days, I focused on precise grooming and style. Starting with the eyebrows, what I thought would be a simple task turned out to be quite the formula. Based on my findings, apparently it turns out you want your eyebrows to be thicker, but not too thick. Cover the length of the arch of the eye, but not go too far. For males, it's ideal for them to be slightly lower. So if you have the extra eyebrow to bring them lower, that would be ideal. And then you do want them to be overall shaped somewhat cleanly. And I don't know about you, cleaning up the eyebrow above and below is actually quite uncomfortable. What the frick, dog? My whole eyebrows go up. In addition to cleaning up these hairs, I cleaned up my nose hairs using a basic nose hair trimmer. Personally, it made quite the difference. Moving down to the teeth, throughout this experiment, I was using a whitening toothpaste, and then for the final week, I added in some white strips to hopefully remove some of those coffee stains I've put on over the years. In addition to the mouth for the final week, I felt like I was getting pretty used to chewing gum to the point where I didn't notice much stimulation, so I threw in the use of a size for about five minutes a day for the final several days. Now what about hairstyle? Well it turns out there is a bunch of acceptable male hairstyles that are considered attractive. Trying my best to choose a style that I thought was suiting, I tried to closely mimic the classic pompadour. I think it's called that. Because I'm kind of growing my hair out right now, it was longer on the top and sides, but still had sideburns, which is what this hairstyle called for, so I just kind of went with that. And then rather than going with a beard, I felt like going with a clean shave for that 90s boy band look. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know why. I feel like a clean shave goes better with this type of hairstyle for me. And then for clothing, amongst all the different styles for maximizing male attractiveness, I decided to go with the simple, classy, clean look 
choosing my one and only linen shirt to hopefully round out this overall appearance. So did one month of doing all of these looks maxing techniques yield any results? Well ladies and gentlemen, it is time to compare the before and after. Okay. I do see a little bit of differences if you look really closely. So if you're not seeing a difference in my before and afters, look again. I am actually going to be continuing to do some of these techniques for the long term, the rosemary oil, the red light, the mewing, and maybe I will make some long term follow up videos on those. Anyways, bless you all. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn those notifications on. More videos coming out. Peace. I will see you all in the next video.